Hey, there's Burrito Powered merchandise. Link in the description. Enjoy the video. Well, one project is out of the way. Now to move on to something else. Hmm, I wonder. You know what? Let's go revisit an old friend. Well, here we are. Over a year has passed since this beautiful charm was born and released to the public. There were some ups and downs, but overall the game was packed with lots of joy, rage, nostalgia, and everything in between. If you couldn't obviously tell, I love Crash Bandicoot. These games defined my childhood, especially CTR. So seeing this brought back so many fond memories. So what does Vicarious Visions decide to do for its one year anniversary? Well, in addition to patching the game for the PS4 version, they decided to make it a multi-platform release. On June 29th, 2018, literally a day short of one year after the initial launch, the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy was re-released on the Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and Steam. While the Switch and Steam versions have their moments, I'm afraid the Xbox One version didn't turn out to drive as much of an audience as the other consoles, which I have predicted would happen. Now don't get me wrong, there are people out there who enjoy playing this on the One, but just not as many as the OG or the Switch. Well, enough history, let's get into this. I'm going to start off with one thing. Two out of the three scores for each individual game will be retired and replaced with a new one. Are they higher or lower? Well, keep watching to find out. I can say though that Warped will keep its nine, so you can narrow down which two I'm talking about. Let's begin, as always, with the very first game, Crash Bandicoot complete with a brand new level that was cut by the original developers because it was too hard. Yep, I can definitely see why. Now I'm not gonna go super in depth like I did last year, instead I'm gonna share my thoughts on how the game looks and plays with the new updates compared to last year. But first, skip you! Oh yeah, did that feel good. Okay, so I load up the game and... Uh... I thought these were supposed to be faster. Well, they're slightly faster, but I'll give the benefit of the doubt and hope that's the only lawn loading screen we encounter. And sure enough it was. After beating the first stage again, loading my 100% completion and going into Stormy Ascent, the load times were indeed faster. What did VV do that greatly reduced these things, and how come they couldn't do this to begin with? Looking at the intro side by side between the PS4 and the Switch, I noticed subtle changes, particularly to the lighting and ugh, that looks awful. Of course, the Switch isn't all that like it was advertised to be, but it still runs the game real well. I can safely say that while I was playing this game on my vacation in Indiana, it ran perfectly, and I had no issues with the graphics, the controls, or anything like that. And there was no input lag either. None that I could notice anyway. But enough about that. Let's talk about Stormy Ascent. Well, it's a level. And it's hard. Not nearly as hard as Slippery Climb though. Why? Because you can fucking die! You piece of shit! That was certainly something I did in this run I recorded for the revisit. The level itself is great. The platforming is really challenging, the enemy placements are crucial for progression, there's only three checkpoints, and they even included the Brio bonus round that didn't make the cut. And it's hard as all balls. The level is very difficult, but not too bad once you get the hang of it. Also, is it me, or does Crash's jumping feel a little bit tweaked? It's probably just me. But other than that, my thoughts from last year still apply to this. However, Crash Bandicoot scores higher this time. It scores... 8 out of 10. Let's move on now to Crash Bandicoot 2, which, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda shat on for most of my time with that game. The jumping is tweaked, of course, the levels look bright and colorful, and the dialogue has been slightly improved. The vehicles still feel the same though, so I was still having a hard time with the polar bear levels. In comparison, once again, there are lighting changes so the Switch can actually run the game. Also, remember how bland the talking head messages were? Well, they got fixed, and now have a background that dims the rest of the screen. Good. What's not good is that they still didn't fix the transition between Cortex and Coco. Oh well, at this point it's a nitpick. 
I will state this right now. I am okay with Crash 2. I am not okay with this. Ugh. Why is it so fuzzy like that? Look at it. That's awful. But I bashed on this game and made half of what I said up just to have a different opinion. But don't you worry, folks. My love for Crash 2 has returned to the fullest. Yes, this game got improvements. While some are minor, the major one is the presentation, like the warp rooms. They look much better. Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back also scores higher. It scores... 8 out of 10. Finally, let's go revisit Warped. Rather, let's go check out the brand new level that came free with the game. Future Tense. Yes, that is a pun. Of course! This level looks beautiful. Like Stormy Ascent, there are plenty of challenges, secrets, and hidden areas in this level. It's got everything about Warped packed into one giant level. In this level, you get a bonus round and a death route. There are a bunch of other puzzles that need to be solved throughout the level as well. For example, this spike head thing needs to be spun into to ricochet into a box located off the path. Of course, you wouldn't notice that on the Switch version, because there are no reflections, not even in the snow levels from Crash 2. So if you're trying to play this level on the Switch version, good fucking luck. Also, grab all the powers before you play it. While one of them is optional, the other four are practically required to get both the gems. And I got a gold relic. I now have 108% on Warped. I feel achieved. This might be my magnum opus for the trilogy. Anyways, back on topic. Other than the silly little gripes I had, Future Tense is still an amazing level, and it goes to show that Vicarious Visions is ready to make an entirely new Crash Bandicoot game. Not to mention, this is the first level that was designed with the original trilogy formula in 20 years, meaning it's the first time since Warped release on the PS1. Speaking of which, remember how I said the load times were much faster this year? Well, now they are as fast, if not faster, than the original games on a PS2 with fast disk speed settings. That speaks volumes. Now if I fail, it's no big deal. It will only take about 20 seconds to reload the level. This is fucking huge compared to nearly a minute. It's a gigantic improvement. Also, they brought back Dingo Dial's line that he says after you beat him. Well, it's not as loud and clear as the original, but I guess better than nothing. Overall, the Insane Trilogy saw some minor and dramatic changes. Some were of course for the better, but then there are some that make me scratch my head and wonder why. However, it is still worth picking up and playing. Crash Bandicoot Warped keeps its score of 9 out of 10. Could Future Tense have made it a 10? Honestly, no. It'll take more than a new flawless level to give Warped a perfect score. Now to answer the days old question, is this the definitive way to play the original trilogy? I mean, they say you can't beat the classics, but in this case, this game can. Does that mean it's the definitive choice? No. I'd say play the originals first, then play the insane trilogy. So, now that we have our three scores, two being improved, the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy Year 2 Edition scores... 8 out of 10. And there you have it. Can't wait to see the changes they make for next year. I'm kidding. They wouldn't do that. Would they? But in all seriousness, thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, make sure to drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel. I've also got a Patreon page, so you can go ahead and check that out in the description. Make sure you check out the Archive channel for John's reviews to see the outtakes. Until next time, take care, every one of you. You thought it was over? Well, it is, but before you go, here's one last thing I want to show you guys.